Hi everyone, it's Talia from Zart Art and today we're going to be making a simple printed calico bag. So today we're going to be focusing on the elements of shape and pattern. So to create our shapes and our patterns, we're going to be using these EVA stamps. So they're very easy to handle, easy to use stamps that we are going to place and repeat over a calico bag. So here we have some little examples of what we'll be creating. So I'm going to make this library bag design with some of those repeated shapes. Now like this pencil case, I'm going to turn those shapes into little fruit forms. So to do that, I'm going to start off by testing some of our stamps. So moving our calico bag out of the way, I'm just going to grab some paper and what we're going to do is have a look at some of the shapes that we have with our EVA stamps. So because we are looking to make our shapes look like fruit, what I want to do is really consider how I can use some of these shapes and how I can make them look like fruit. So what you might want to do is place some of these stamps out and have a good look at them and really consider how you can turn those shapes into a fruit form. So by looking at some of these shapes like simple circles, they could be a variety of different fruits such as oranges, apples or even plums and this can be dictated by the colours that you use. So what I'm going to do is just practice stamping some of these shapes in different colours and have a bit of a think of what fruits could represent each shape. So for this process, I'm going to use a little bit of acrylic paint and we're just going to use another piece of paper as a little bit of a palette because we don't need too much paint at all. We'll get our brush and apply a small amount of paint onto our stamps and you shouldn't need too much and you can also add a little bit of water if your acrylic paint is quite thick. It's just a little touch of water to help spread that paint over the stamp and then you can stamp that on your page and you can repeat the stamp as well and see how much paint you can get off that stamp and how many times you can repeat that pattern. And even some of these shapes might work quite well with a little bit of less paint on them and that will create a sense of texture. So what I'm going to do now is try a few different stamps in a few different colours and see what I can come up with. Now I've had a little bit of an experiment with some of my shapes and if you do want to clean off your shapes you can do so under running water but because I am going to reuse these I'm just going to give them a little bit of a wipe with a damp cloth and then they'll be fine to use for my next prints and then I can wash them off completely later on but just so I don't make too much of a mess I'll wipe them down with my cloth before I work on my good copy for my prints. So I've had a little bit of a play with some of my shapes and I can see some that I really like the look of like this little round one here looks a bit like a lemon. I can turn this one into a bit of an orange. I might change the colours of this one to make it resemble a watermelon. So you can paint on your stamp. So if you want multiple colours you can blend the colours together or you can paint it in different sections just using your brush. And I've got this circle which I might turn into a plum. Now once your shapes have dried you can work over them with markers to really emphasize those fruit shapes like I have with this little pencil case design. I've used markers to add some seeds, some stems and leaves but we'll leave that until we work on top of our bag. So putting away our little design. I've also got a letter there that I've tried out which I might print on the bag as well just to add another little design element. But now we can have a think about how we might 
do our layout on our bag. So really have a think about the composition of your bag, if you want it to be symmetrical or asymmetrical, where you might place things. So because I do want to incorporate some letters, I think I'll just lay it out a little bit first so I get an idea. So we've got yum, because we're working with fruit, and this is going to be my little fruit library bag. And then I think I'll have a bit of a mix of our different patterns across the bag, but not too crowded. So I will separate those patterns out a little bit to create a nice asymmetrical but balanced piece of work. So I'm trying to make it balanced where it's not too busy in some areas, but it just flows throughout my design. So going through that same process of stamping my shapes down, letting them dry, and then I'll work over the top. Because you are working on fabric, it will act a little bit differently to paper. So you might want to add a little bit more paint so you get some nice bolder prints. And you can also put a piece of card or a piece of paper in the center of your bag, just so you know that if you are using a lot of paint, it's not going to go through to the other side. So I've just got a piece of paper in there to protect the other side of my bag while I'm printing. But otherwise, I'm going to go through the same process which I did on my piece of paper. Now I've finished printing my shapes and I've had a bit of fun with changing some of the colors. So you can add multiple colors onto the one stamp and stamp it down. So I've got my words here and I've got my little fruit shapes and they're almost pretty much dry actually. It's quite warm and the calico is really absorbent so it won't take long at all for that to completely dry. Now I've got some fabric markers here which I'm going to use to draw over my fruit shapes to make them actually look like the fruits. So when you're doing this, if you were creating a project where you actually want to wash your work, so whether that be a t-shirt or maybe you're making a bag that you want to be washable, you can use fabric paints instead of acrylic paints. But because I've just used normal acrylics, this bag won't be washable. But if you did want it to be washable, use fabric paints or fabric inks with your stamps and then heat set them. And then you can use these fabric markers over the top. So these fabric markers will be fine to be washed as well. And they set within 24 hours, which is always handy. So now I'm going to pick a few colors, create some stems, and some seeds in these fruits and then hopefully they'll look a little bit more realistic.
Okay, so now I've finished adding in some of my detail with my fabric markers. And as you can see, that's kind of lifted those shapes a little bit more so they don't seem so flat and they do resemble more of those fruit forms that I was talking about earlier. So this could be a really fun project just for simple printmaking ideas, or you could extend it to reflect more visual design and communication to think about what audience you're trying to create a product for and extend it more to a secondary level, speaking about the audience, the style, and going on from there but otherwise you could just leave it as is and it can be a really great junior primary project just to introduce them to simple printmaking but there's a lot of different directions that you can go with with a project like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.